Hi and welcome back to the Enigmatic Universe. I am your host, Clifton3D, and today is Sunday, which means we will be continuing our Sunday Bible Stories series. Today, Genesis chapter 30 and 31. As always, we are reading the King James Online Study Bible, Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's steed, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid, Billah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilah, her handmaid, to wife. And Jacob went in unto her. And Bilah conceived, and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bela, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister. And I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Lee saw that she had left bearing, she took Silpha, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Silpha, Lee's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Lee said, A top cometh. And she called his name Gad. And Silpha, Lee's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Lee said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother, Lee. Then Rachel said to Lee, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Lee went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Lee, and she conceived, and bare Jacob a fifth son. And Lee said, God hath given me my hair, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Lee conceived again, and bare Jacob a sixth son. And Lee said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Sebelun. And afterwards she bare a daughter, and called her name Dina. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived, and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had borne Joseph, 
that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go on to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by the experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and freckled among the goats, and of such shall be my heir. So shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come, when it shall come for my heir before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and the brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-striked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and pilled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks, in the gutters, in the watering troughs, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle, ring-striked, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring-striked, and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, when soever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maidservants, and men servants, and camels, and asses. That was chapter 30 of Genesis. Now, last week, we learned that Laban tricked Jacob into marrying his eldest daughter first. And in, in today's world, I think that Jacob could rightfully be upset, could rightfully despise Laban. He stayed on, which at that point I probably wouldn't have, in today's world, continued to work for him. 
and then Jacob uh, seems like he's building himself up a, a, a little harem there. A joke, of course. Yeah, I would take a harem. <laughs> but no. In today's world, I don't think many people would agree with this approach. Okay, you got the wrong wife. You got the wife you didn't want. Then the wife that you wanted, you you know, you work hard, you you get to marry her, and then she can't bear children. And I think that would be reason to be furious, to absolutely despise Laban. But in the world from back then, and heck, probably even close to today's world, if not even still, look at the region that they would be in. Look at how things are today, where, you know, I've learned that basically camels were worth more than, you know, women. Now, in today's world, you and I don't agree with that. Back then, would this have been a fair trade or even you know, turning the tide? Oh, how the turntables of, you know, turned. <laughs> um, possibly. For back then. He, Jacob has himself a harem. He has many, many children. He even was able to conceive with Rachel, his, you know, chosen wife, the wife that he wanted. So let me know down in the comments below if you think this was a fair trade for the times that they lived in not in today's times because of course I wouldn't agree with that that you know it just... but let me know what you think let's go on to chapter 31 Genesis chapter 31 and he heard the words of Laban's sons saying Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's, hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent, and called Rachel and Lee to the field unto his flock. And said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And you know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled, shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straked shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straked. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. And it came to pass, at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes, and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams, which leaped upon the cattle, were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spoke unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see, all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, and speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth on to thee. 
I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Lee answered and said unto him, is there yet any portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon the camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Pandamarum, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face toward the mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled, and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the Mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me, that I might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, with tabret, and with harp, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters, though hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spoke unto me yesternight, saying, Take though heed that though speak not to Jacob either good or bad, and now Though thou wouldest need be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peraventure, thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy goods, gods, let him not live, before our brethren discern though what is thine with me, and take it to thee, for Jacob knew that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Lee's tent, and into the two maid maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out to Lee's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord, that I cannot rise up before thee. For the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Jacob was worth, and code with Laban, 
And Jacob answered and said unto Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it, of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I serve thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hadst sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou hast seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children, which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jagger I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but Jacob called it Gilead. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Gilead. And Mespah, for he said, The Lord, watch between me and thee, when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee and that thou shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us, and Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. That was chapter 31 of Genesis. Interesting chapter, actually. Do you think that Laban deserved, deserved this, especially from his daughter Rachel? Who, who stole from him more than, than what seems that God gave to Jacob. 
I found the dialogue between Jacob and Laban very interesting. I think Jacob was in the right. I think Laban was upset, frustrated, even. But they, you know, basically found a way together to be peaceful in the end. They're just not allowed to cross over in the other's land. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this chapter, of both chapters, really. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash the like button. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. It helps out the channel. And other than that, all I have to say is I, I wish you all a blessed Sunday, great weekend, and a good start into the new week. Until next time, take care.